Hey everybody, welcome to Above All Journal. Today I'm showing you guys how to make a junky junk journal. So I'm just starting out here with some cereal boxes and I'm getting them cut down to size. So I'm doing a nine by six journal and I'm just going to be using four pieces of this cardboard from the cereal box. Make sure that you're cutting all of the pieces of the cereal box down to the same size. I'm gonna show you how to cut two of them and then we're gonna move on to the spine part, but make sure you're cutting all pieces down to the same size. Moving on to the spine now, I'm just using the side of a cereal box. It happened to be three inches, which was perfect for this journal. And then I'm just going to cut it to nine inches, which is the height of the cover. And I'm going to do that two times, just so we can bulk it up. And we're also going to be doing a hidden spine. So moving on to the cover again. So with the four pieces that you cut out, you're just going to Mod Podge them or glue them together. I prefer the Mod Podge, so I took my time dilly-dallying with this gluing process, but I was also listening to an audiobook at the time. So I was just relaxing and enjoying the day and <laughs> gluing very slowly, so sorry for the process, but it is part of the process. I also like to make sure that I put the colors or the picture in the center and that way there's brown on each side. Then you're going to round up your pages. I am using 30 pieces of paper folded in half. So gather up whatever kinds of papers you want. This is book pages, dyed pages, just all kinds of things that I have laying around the house basically that I have claimed for junk journaling now. And then when you get to a page that is much longer, you can also fold in some pockets or tuck spots. I like to um, put some pockets in there. So here I'm just kind of measuring how big it is and then just folding up a side and creating a pocket. Moving back to the spine, again, I'm just using one piece of the cereal box here and I'm putting down some Mod Podge because I'm going to do a little bit of collaging and covering up that boring board piece and just making it more decorative. And I decided to use some offcuts from my scrapbook pile.
And then here I'm just putting a layer of Mod Podge over the top of all of this because I want to make sure everything gets glued down really well and kind of just is one whole piece. And just if you choose to do this, just know that it will make it a little tacky. There are ways to fix that, but I wasn't too concerned about that for this. So just know that if you decide to do this, it could like on a bigger piece, it could make it sticky. And then I'm just trimming whatever is off the side there. I guess the technical term would be overhanging, so cut your overhangs. And there it is. Moving on now, I'm just going to take that stack of papers that I had and I am going to divvy them out into three groups of ten. And then when they are all divvied out, you make the signatures. And this is just a really quick view of what that looks like. So you're just going to basically lay them on top of each other with the folds in the center. And that's how you make the signature. Then I'm using a template and I am marking all the holes for the spine insert here and I will make a video of how to make those templates and then you're just going to go in with your awl or your punch and you're going to just poke the holes where you marked. I personally really like using the crocodile punch here because it is faster. I have noticed that the awl does make the same size holes, so if that's all you have access to, that's totally fine, but this is just quicker for me and um, more precise, I feel. Of course, I like to go in with the awl and just make sure that all of those trimmings come out so that I'm not messing with it later when I'm sewing. And there's all the holes that are punched. So now I'm gonna take the signature one of our signatures and I'm going to just kind of fold it back on it onto itself so that the center crease is now the outer crease and you just want to make sure that you get those nice and tight in the center I even like to take a ruler sometimes and really squish that center piece in and then you're just gonna mark where the holes would land on the paper after you've lined it up just right next to it and then I am going to fold it back over, tap all the pages in, and then clip the pages together. So as you're punching your all through, you want to really make sure that you're keeping the pages kind of folded. Obviously, they're going to be apart a little bit, but you want to make sure that they're kind of trained to be in this position. Now moving on to the sewing portion of this tutorial, you're going to need a needle and some string. I'm using embossing threads and the needle that I have is kind of a big needle. It's used for furniture repairs but it works well for junk journaling. I like to have the bigger needle because you're going through some pretty big holes so it helps. To get started you're just going to go out the middle hole so you're going to start in the book and go out of the book and you want to make sure that you have a tail next to your needle as well as a tail in the middle of the book 
so that you can tie it off in the end and for some reason I really struggled with this part of <laughs> the journal making process this day so um, make sure that when you're putting the needle through you're putting it through when the pages are folded because if you do it that way the needle will just slide right in and it makes everything much easier <laughs> I was trying to put it in flat pages um, a few times like you can see here and I'm really forcing it you don't need to do that just fold the pages over and it should glide right in to where you pierced those holes Then when you come in through the center, you're just going to make sure that you're not getting caught in that other tail and you are not um, piercing in through any of the other threads. And then you want to keep a keep the tail on the other side and then have the threads in the center there. And then I'm just kind of pulling them to make them even here. And then you're just going to do a square knot. So I did left over right. Then I did right over left. And then left over right again. And that's how I tie off all my journals. If you want to make sure it stays super secure, you can put a little dollop of Fabrifix. Or you can even do like a little bit of like clear nail polish. That seems to work. But that's how you sew in the signatures. Now we're looking at the cover again. And now we're going to assemble the cover. So I'm just putting it on my scoreboard to kind of get the spacing correct here. It ends up not being straight or perfect at the end anyways. But it is junky and I'm not really going for perfection here. Then I am taking a piece of medical tape. And I am just securing that seam right there just to bring those two pieces together then I am just flipping it over on the back readjusting it to make sure that space is still present and then I'm just going to bring the tape down around and secure it really well I like to do a couple of wraps and I've never had any issues with this coming undone. I used to use packing tape, so please use what you have if you don't have any of this medical tape. It will work just fine. And then I am just going to take my bone folder and really get in the crease to make sure that it's sticking really well and I want that crease to be very defined because that's where the book is going to fold. Now to do the other side, I just line it right up and then I do the same process there. And now we should have the cover of our book ready to go and of course just make sure that you've got those creases very well defined and I'm going to go ahead and cover those just to make sure they stay secure with some fabric so I just make a little snip here at like the nine inches inchish mark <laughs> around nine inches and then I just rip it and then I'm just gonna rip that little piece in half and then I'm going to secure it down with some Fabrifix. And we're going to do the other side as well. And now I'm just going to do the same thing I did with the tape. I'm going to just make sure that 
the fabric fix is getting pushed down into that crease and being secured where I want it and then I'm going to put some fabric fix all over the spine and part of the fabric there so that we can glue in our signature um, block I guess <laughs> I don't really know what to call it this is how you would make a hidden spine so you've already done all the sewing and now you're putting this extra piece in there so that you can't see all of the sewing that took place in a lot of junk journals they just poke right through the spine so you would make the whole book usually and then do the spine but that's not what we did this time and then I'm just making sure that I am securing this piece in really well making sure it gets really squished down um, there were a couple times when I had to put a little bit more glue around the corners there just because I didn't get enough glue but for the most part it was just fine and the cardboard does like to kind of stick up on you a little bit so you got to really make sure that it is getting glued securely and then just like that you have a junk journal um thank you for watching i will be posting part two here soon thanks bye